on over here, sugar buns. This machine just called me an asshole. Hi there, I'm Ricky and welcome to my first build video. Today we'll be building an affordable DIY night vision scope thingy. Let's get started. Here are all the parts. A 1000 TVL CMOS 12V IR camera with an adjustable 2.8 to 12mm lens. I reckon it will be a lot easier to use an adjustable lens seeing how, uh, well, it, it will be easier to adjust the focal distance to the actual scope. Like this you can come as close as possible to the camera. This in turn will result in a uh, smaller, more compact and lighter system. And this way you can also use it with whatever size scope. Then I got a cheap 3.5 inch LCD monitor with two channels. It also runs on 12 volts. A uh, rechargeable 12 volt uh, 4800 milliamp battery pack. Uh, this one actually came with an on and off uh, rocker switch and a uh, red LED as well. I'll be using those for the project. A uh, 3 to 30 volt uh, voltmeter. Uh, then I also used one uh, RCA panel socket, uh, a 2 pin and a 6 pin cable connector. Uh, these are not in this picture. And then you're gonna need a uh, micro uh, momentary push switch, a female DC power socket. It's the 5.5 uh, by 2.1 millimeter type, and a uh, cheap viewfinder. Oh yeah, uh, some three millimeter acrylic sheet and acrylic glue. Here are the schematics of this build. Hit pause and grab a screenshot if you need it. So, I started with modifying the camera a bit. Cut the legs to the photo cell and solder them to some wires. I soldered the whole thing to a piece of PCB for easy attachment to the housing later on. Also remove the IR LEDs and cover up the holes with some tape. This is important because you don't want any reflections on the back of the scope lens. Then adjust the zoom and focus on the camera lens until you have the biggest area of the scope covered and the crosshairs are nice and sharp and crisp. I used a piece of PVC pipe to set the distance to the scope. The grey piece that attaches to the scope is a PVC pipe coupler that I slightly turned down on the lathe for a perfect fit on the scope. Here you can see all six wires soldered to a six pin wire connector. I then marked out the holes for the menu switches on the monitor. The on off switch, RCA video out, charging port, battery test switch and voltmeter. This is the back side of the finished camera monitor housing. It's made out of 3mm acrylic sheet and it's just glued together with some acrylic glue. And here's the front side and the side. And here's the whole thing painted. I then slipped the 6 pin connector through the slot in the lower part of the monitor compartment and pushed the whole camera assembly into the housing. The housing is held onto the PVC coupler with a small screw visible under the slot for the voltmeter. A final test to see if everything is hooked up correctly. Here you can see the external video out image in the upper monitor. Then solder everything together and check that everything fits inside the compartment. Also attach the monitor menu cable to the monitor. Oh yeah, I cut a slot in the back of the monitor for the cable. The cardboard wrap around the battery has been cut down in order for it to fit inside the compartment. The menu push buttons are held in place by the small tabs also made out of little pieces of acrylic. They are pre-drilled and screwed down into two other pieces of acrylic that are glued to the housing wall. And here's the whole thing assembled. Here you can see the placement of the photo cell. I then attached the metal frame that the viewfinder's magnets hold onto to the monitor and the viewfinder to the screen. Nah. I quickly found out that the magnets are way too weak. 
you'll probably drop the damn thing if you bump it somewhere out there in the dark. So I cut a piece of acrylic that fits the monitor, painted the part that the viewfinder won't cover black, and drilled some holes in all four corners. I then removed the magnets from the viewfinder and glued the thing to the acrylic piece. Here you can see the whole thing screwed onto the front piece of the monitor. And finally we arrive at this. Hmm. This reminds me of something. It has that clunky 1987-ish style. I think I just made a movie prop. The whole thing just slides onto the scope. The scope is just an old 3 to 9 time magnification BSA I had laying around. The rig is built upon a uh, 25 centimeter viewer rail and uh, attaches to another rail using uh, two quick release scope mount adapters. So let's turn this thing on. Here you can see the difference in normal uh, daylight view and uh, IR mode. Let's quickly have a look at the uh, monitor menu. And that's the whole menu. I would recommend adjusting the uh, monitor settings in complete darkness. That will give you the best view with the uh, least strain on the eye. I set mine almost to uh, zero. By pushing this you can check the battery level at all times, uh, whether the scope is on or off. The battery is easily charged by plugging into the charger, and once ready easily removed and uh, won't leave you in an arsenal of uh, cables dangling around. Okay, so let's see what it looks like through the actual scope. This is shot during the afternoon. But what about the night vision, you say? I went to a 50 meter indoor range to test it out. And here's some footage of that. This is what it looks like when you switch on the scope. Here you can see what the IR torch does. I'm zooming out to 50 meters. Oh yeah, the torch is a uh, cheap Vast Fire IR T67 uh, with an Osram 850 nanometer bulb. And here's just a pan from uh, 25 to 50 meters. I had some problems with reflections on this range. All the walls reflected the uh, IR light and it seems the IR camera has some kind of uh, internal automatic focus. Uh, even though the lens is manual, there were some minor issues with the focus. So, there was nothing left to do but head out to a field during the night. And I did just that. And フィンランドのボルトアクション、サブマシンガン、トロイヤマグナム。
ゴーストトリガーシステムのファイアセレクタとマッチトリガーを世界中に出荷しています。セルフクロージングラバーワイプを使用している場合、マシンガンのマイクロサウンド。トロージャンマグナムは非常に速く、ハイスピードよりも速く打ちます。20.3x99mm は、タイヨシコ、トイオタシ、用に設計されたアンティマテリエルラウンドです。ここ、スーク、ない。Here are the、uh, results.I set up some targets on a field at、uh, 25, 50, 75, 100, 150 and meters.Let's see how、uh, that went.Here you can see me switching the IR light on and off again. Here the scope is zoomed out at 3x. You can see the、uh, IR beam traveling down the range all the way to that 150 meter target.、Uh, it looks like the、uh, target is sitting on the ground because there was a、uh, bit of a slope on the field. That, by the way, is zoomed in all the way to 9x. When the、uh, torch is zoomed out all the way to the max, you can see a little bit of play in the、uh, torch head. Now I pan back to the 25 meter target. Scope and torch are both zoomed into the max. You'll notice that both、uh, 50 and 25 meter targets get blown out by the torch. Here I pan through the targets one more time. Scope fully zoomed in, but、uh, adjusting the torch as needed. The tree line behind the last target is about 150 to 200 meters away. You can still see some light hitting 200 meters, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call 200 on this setup. So, those paper targets were highly reflective white surfaces. What about <clears throat> other targets? Here you can see my helpful assistant modeling at 25 meters. And at 75 meters. And at 100 meters. The slope makes it a bit hard to see, but、uh, he clearly gets hit by the IR light. Here at、uh, 150 meters, you can barely see him waving his arm. But at、uh, 125 meters or so, you can still see him pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the results. I guess a better torch might improve the distance. I'm also not sure that the、uh, Osram bulb is actually a genuine Osram 850 nanometer bulb. 
You can see a small red dot from, uh, from a distance when the torch is zoomed out, but when fully zoomed in, at maximum distance that is, you can see a pattern of uh, red dots. The way the pattern of the bulb is seen through the scope when it's zoomed out to the max. Well, now that it's all done, I wonder how long this thing actually will run on that battery. I started thinking about it, I had one of those moments when you uh, remember taking that class in school and being in the actual classroom, but remember nothing. Well, here's a guesstimation of how long it'll run. The camera runs on 12 volts and it shuts down around 5.2 volts, so uh, I'm not sure how long it'll run, but uh, it'll run on 6 volts. The screen also runs on 12 volts, uh, but it starts to flicker around 7 volts and uh, it'll eventually shut down at 5.5 volts. So we call that a uh, safe 8 volts. The camera draws 60 milliamps and the uh, screen draws 160 milliamps. So that, that's uh, 220 milliamps. And here are just the specs on the lithium ion batteries. No need to dig any deeper into that one. So this is what I figured. If 12.6 volts, uh, the battery is fully charged at 100%, that gives us uh, 4800 milliamp hours. And at 10.8 volts, that's 86% uh, of the charge, that gives us 4128 milliamp hours. So the working area between 186% should be like 4800 to 4128 milliamp hours. That's the difference is 672 milliamp hours. I found this battery life calculator online. The formula says that battery life uh, equals uh, battery capacity in milliamp hours divided by load current in milliamps times 0 0.70. The uh, factor of 0.7 makes allowances for external factors which can affect the battery life. I'm, I'm guessing cold, heat, something like that. So uh, I'll, I'll run with this formula. So according to that formula, uh, 672 milliamp hours divided by 220 milliamps times that factor of 0.7 equals uh, 2.138 hours, uh, that's 128 minutes. So basically it should run for uh, about 2 hours plus from a uh, fully charged battery all the way down to 10.8 volts. We'll see. Hold your armrests there warriors. Before you mobilize to the common field and start a war, I will be making an actual test to determine the battery's capabilities. Uh, I will post that video as soon as possible. And for any of you that wonder how much a project like this will set you back, well, uh, let's hit the store and find out. So that's it, hope you enjoyed this project and I'll see you on the next one. Wait a minute, those who paid attention might have spotted a switch that went unmentioned. Well, stay tuned and you'll see what it's all about in my next video.